Hey friend Arenos, it's Wednesday. Let's go ahead and talk about the hot news. But first, we have today's video sponsor to discuss. My friends, today's video is brought to you by Opera and their gaming web browser, Opera GX. My friends, if you're a gamer, you're gonna wanna check out this web browser because it has a whole host of features that make playing video games and being on your web browser way easier, whether that's for keeping Twitch streams on in the background, playing music, what have you. Opera GX has features like GX Control, which allows you to control things like your CPU performance, your network, as well as various other things within the browser instead of having to go to other resources like Task Manager to actually be able to control how much performance your web browser is using so that you're not taking all of those resources into the browsing and you're actually putting all those resources into your game. You also have things like GX Corner, which stays up to date with free games. They compile the list of free games that they can find to deliver them to you because it's a gaming first web browser. They wanna make sure that you're playing those games. Then they have Twitch and Discord integration. Directly from the sidebar, you can get notifications when streamers go live, like us over on our Twitch channel, as well as Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Telegram, what have you, messaging apps can be integrated completely. Opera even has their own Discord server, which you can join because they have bi-weekly ongoing giveaways and contests, which you can check out at the link in the video description. And then there's the design and customization. They've created a web browser that looks both dark and beautiful with colorful accents that are inspired by neon lights and that break the darkness of the night. You can customize the browser with special wallpapers and colors and if you're a Razer Chroma owner, you can actually sync it up with that. They also have several additional features like Hot Tabs Killer that allow you to identify the most resource straining tabs and close those down. You can force dark pages, you can pop out video, and there's a free VPN integrated into the web browser. So go ahead and download Opera GX. The link will be in the video description for that. And once you downloaded Opera GX, go ahead and write a comment down below with the hashtag installed GX. We'll actually be responding to the comments with those hashtags. Let us know why you're installing Opera GX. And again, big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. And now we have to discuss discuss the RTX 30 series because not only is Nvidia going with this weird Founders Edition design, or at least we think they are based on images that have been leaked, and not only are they going with the design, they're also going with the peculiar PCB shape that looks like a Pac-Man eating thing. Well, now, apparently, according to a new report, they're also going to be introducing a brand new power connector to these GPUs because they require so much gosh dang juice to run them. Yes, my friends, what you're about to see is the new implementation of the 12-pin power connector on an NVIDIA GPU. Currently, in case you're not familiar, GPUs typically have something like this, which is an eight pin or a six pin, which is missing those grounds. Well, looks like the RTX 30 series will have a bigger connector, 12 pins, which should be able to deliver them around 400 watts at six amps for the upcoming 30 series GPUs. This is an intriguing development, and I can hear so many of you in the comments down below being like, what? How could NVIDIA do this to us? I don't want to have to buy a damn new power supply in order to run my GPU, which I felt that as well. I don't want to have to buy a new power supply in order to run the next generation of GPUs. Well, turns out, at least according to this same report, that number one, this looks like it's only going to be on NVIDIA Founders Edition cards and not necessarily for AIB partner models who will likely continue to ship with the six and eight pin connectors. And if I'm reading this correctly enough, which I may be misunderstanding it, if you plug two of the six pin power connectors that typically comes with your power supply, it will still run the card given that your actual connectors are high quality enough. This might mean that some people who have garbage six pin power connectors on garbage power supplies might not be able to run the card, but if they have high enough quality six pins, they could potentially not have to upgrade their power supply. So this shouldn't be a huge deal for a lot of people. I mean, it's already a very expensive set of cards to begin with, at least I'm presuming, probably in the 700 to a thousand dollar region that already limits its subset of customers. But then on top of that, not many people are dropping that type of cash on a GPU and then not also spending a respectable amount on a power supply. However, if you have a terrible power supply and you've kind of been skimping along on that, you might have to consider upgrading to a new one. And this could mean that we might see new power supplies unveiling sometime soon where they're actually gonna have this 12 pin power connector that we have not seen 
rolled out as of yet or potentially they're just going to be like no just use the two six pins and maybe we'll ship you an adapter or something obviously this isn't confirmed at this point but nvidia changing up the power design is an intriguing thought let me know what you think of it down below i am happy to hear that this hopefully won't necessitate new power supply purchases in order to upgrade to the next generation speaking of the next generation we got some more information on the next generation of amd's GPU-ation. GPUs. Anyways, AMD's Navy Flounder Navi 22 has been added to Linux patches. In case you're not familiar with what Navy Flounder is, which why would you? This just got announced. It's going to be an Apple exclusive AMD chip. So this is going to be next gen Navi, Navi 22, but not going to be anything relevant to normal gaming consumers. And it's just Linux driver support at this point, which doesn't mean a whole lot as far as specs or performance or anything like that. But while we're still waiting to hear more about next generation Navi, we got unveiled from yesterday officially by AMD that Threadripper Pro is officially real. That getting confirmed, the eight channel memory, the up to 128 PCI Express 4.0 lanes, all of that delicious goodness of Threadripper Pro exists and you can find it in the Lenovo ThinkStation P620, which is gonna be the world's first AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro workstation as you can see here. But while AMD continues to give us high-end desktop chips, Intel is taking those away with them discontinuing the ninth gen Skylake X high-end desktop chips. You can see on the screen right now which ones are going to be discontinued, which doesn't mean a whole lot in Intel world. It just means that they're gonna stop shipping to distributors and retailers who will have an overabundance of stock because they're outdated and outmoded. But since Intel doesn't drop the price, they're just gonna sit on shelves forever and still be the same price. I'm looking at you, 7,700K on Newegg, huh? Yeah, you've never come down, have you? No, no siree. But while AMD's added to their family, Intel's taken away from their family. Ford is reviving a family with the 2021 Bronco family being unveiled yesterday. You can see various images of the upcoming Bronco. They are gonna have two and four doors. I'll leave links in the video description in case you care more about this car stuff. But Ford Bronco making a comeback. And apparently weird trends from the mid to late 2000s are making a comeback if you're Corsair because they just launched the IQ Nexus Companion touchscreen, which is a touchscreen that you add onto one of their Corsair compatible keyboards like the K70 or the K95. It gives you a little touchscreen stuff so that you can, you know, monitor your PC or as you see here, monitor your mouse and all of that kind of stuff, which just reminded me of things like this, Logitech's G19 gaming keyboard, which had that little screen up top. I actually never owned one of these, so I don't know if it was any good, but I remember wanting one of these. It seemed like the pinnacle of a gaming keyboard back in 2009, 2010, maybe? I don't know, Corsair with their Nexus thing. Corsair announcing that this is gonna cost $100 for the add-on on top of an already expensive keyboard. I don't know what I think of this. So you guys form an opinion down below in the comments. And I know what our editor, Catelyn, thinks of Tomb Raider. She likes Tomb Raider. And it appears that Square Enix is preparing a Tomb Raider Ultimate Experience package, which is gonna sell most of the games in a giant bundle coming August 27th to Xbox One, PS4, Switch, Steam, and Stadia, at least according to a leaked promotional image. It's 15 games over 24 years. Are you gonna pick up the true Tomb Raider experience? True is Tomb Raider ultimate experience i get it and talking about old games coming out halo 3 now available on pc and then google stadia had their stadia connect event yesterday they talked about a few things number one they are getting stadia exclusives from harmonix who was responsible for War rock band and then also supermassive games who was responsible for until dawn they're going to be making stadia exclusives for them and then on top of that they announced that they're adding new games like nba 2k21 Sekiro: shadows die twice outriders and a few others which you guys may care about I won't. We'll leave links in the video description. They are getting a Bomberman Battle Royale game, which is odd to kind of show off their connectivity play on Stadia. And it's going to support up to 64 players, but you will have to find... 30 more people who are willing to pay for Stadia in order to actually have a playable experience. Speaking of Battle Royales, PUBG has passed 70 million units sold, which is crazy for its 
season eight setup they are actually apparently going to be redoing their sandhawk map you can check the link in the video description for more details on that in case you care about PUBG and talking about ubisoft with one of their games just quickly in case you remember they announced a game called skull and bones which was supposed to be some pirating sea simulator thing right and that sounds like it already came out well that's sea of thieves and skull and bones was supposed to launch around the same time and sea of thieves has been out for a while now well apparently that just skull and bones has died and then they're reviving it to become something different and now it's going to be more of a live interactive experience which why wouldn't it just be an online playable thing in the first skull and bones should just die at this point but what shouldn't die is death stranding because i actually enjoyed that game i haven't completed it yet but i have had a good experience with it and it launched on pc yesterday guru 3d actually has a pretty cool little article on it where they benchmarked over 30 different graphics cards so you can see how well your pc might run death stranding spoiler alert uh it runs at 60 fps at 1080p on an rx 470 so you're going to be mostly fine with whatever card you have and whatever phone you have might be obsolete not really we're talking about the OnePlus Nord, which is going to be the sub $500 smartphone from OnePlus, they confirmed in an interview with MKBHD, basically all of the specs that we've heard rumored, 765G with a 5G uh, modem in it and everything that comes with that. You can check MKBHD's video out for the world exclusive on that. And then Cooler Master released their NR200 and NR200P mini ITX chassis, which appear to be pretty decent. You can check out Optimum Tech's review of this down below in the comments as well or in that top right hand corner just for a further breakdown and in case you don't know optimum tech is one of the best places you can go if you're trying to find information on mini itx setups he does a phenomenal job over there but apple did not do a phenomenal job when it comes to selling iphones apparently they did such a bad job that they had to pay nearly a billion dollars for it this is coming with samsung reporting in their earnings that they got a one-time gain related to its display business well this is apparently because Apple didn't sell as many phones as they thought, and so they had to pay Samsung for the OLED shipments that they were expected to receive, but then never actually ended up needing, so they had to pay Samsung anyways. So not only did Apple lose because they sold less phones, but then they also had to pay for their losery. So that, sad. Slightly reminds me of that one rumor that went around that like Samsung owed Apple a billion dollars and they paid them all in nickels, which was completely fabricated, but would have been pretty cool. And what's cool is your life when hot news is over because I, I'm not here to keep you warm and hot news is over now, friends. So go find some source of heat like today's video sponsor. And once again, big thanks to Opera for sponsoring today's video. Go try out the Opera GX browser made for gamers. You're gonna love it. Check it out, download it down below. Don't forget to leave the comment down below in the video description with hashtag installed GX. We're keen to hear from you down below, friends. And yes, I will leave you now. Go well, friends. <laughs>